Hello there, Bobby. Welcome to another quick video. We're up in the Lake District this week, and we actually just popped to Dudden Iron Furnace. Um, really sort of impressive structure, and from what the information says, uh, it's one of the most impressive iron blast furnaces in the country. So let's go and have a wander around, shall we? See what we can find. The blast furnace essentially worked by sort of blowing air into what is essentially a uh, an iron and charcoal mix to raise the temperature hence the word blast so it's actually blasting air into it and the way that actually works is a massive increase in temperature takes all the impurities out and what you're left with is a very very pure version of iron massive in the uh, the 1700s and really it's sort of one of the key stars to sort of kickstart the industrial revolution with sort of the use of iron and then later steel works and this here is the blasting arch. So this is where the furnace would have been. Uh, just take them inside. I'm going to get a little bit dark. Uh, just show up there. The temperatures in here would have been absolutely unbelievable. But I can just see the top of the chimney there. It has been capped off now for safety. But yeah, this is where the, uh, the smelting would have happened. And just around here, is a wheel well for a uh, a water wheel uh, that was actually used to drive a turbine which blew the air into the blast furnace keeping the, uh, the temperature and the actual sort of airflow into the hearth and increasing the temperatures um, the setting now you wouldn't actually uh, believe it because of how, uh, how sort of nature's taken over but it's great to see it uh, still relatively intact and obviously it's a big piece of uh, industrial history and so if you were to travel back to the, the 1700s um, all of the area around here looks like it's big in iron smelting um, because we're fairly close at the moment sort of the estuaries and stuff like that so stuff was like produced sent down to sort of places like Chepstow, Liverpool uh, lots of stuff transformed into things like you know, sort of anchors and chains and stuff like that so it was really sort of big in those sort of days um, it's just incredible to think you know, sort of go back to the 1700s this would have been you know, sort of red hot workers around stuff going on you know, complete sort of shadow to what it is today um, absolutely incredible structure though because everything is sort of it's dry stone built, so it's not like it's all mortared in, stuff like this. The main blast furnace itself, just to tell you, that one obviously is sort of mortared in plastic, the heat involved, stuff like that. But yeah, absolutely amazing structure. And uh, yeah, it's just really interesting. Just have a bit of a wander around and sort of imagine what it used to be like. And come into little structures like this, there's little features you can see, I and mean, that looks like it. It's probably once a chimney of some sort, some sort of flue and that looked like it was a fireplace for an upstairs but it looks like the whole thing there's no mortar involved, this is all just rock that's been placed and used to actually sort of hold itself together um, wooden lintels as well, which are still visible, that one's actually been repaired but yeah, what an amazing place so obviously now the van build's completed, we'll be doing more of these little tours around and just play the taking in different areas. So if that's the sort of thing you're interested in, let us know. Um, so drop a comment down below, I'll get back to you on that. It's the sort of thing, the channel's now starting to sort of evolve and develop. Um, it's gone from being just a build in the van, we're now actually out using the van and visiting different places. So if that's sort of, sort of you know, you're interested in it, or the sort of anything sort of you think might be quite interesting to see, just drop us a comment down below, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You might just be able to make out there. That's the top of the uh, the blast chamber, which is now obviously capped off. But you can actually walk up to it and actually get quite a nice view over the side. And obviously, you do have to be careful. Sometimes you do see a stray Keith and Tracy wandering around. 
So there's quite a few buildings on the site. And this is an early charcoal store. Now if I just take you inside, you can see, which I don't fall over, the size of the place. That gives you some idea of the amount that was being used and what they're producing up here. Definitely it's got uh, such a sort of grand effect. Absolutely massive area. But they actually have outgrew this and had to uh, build a second store right next door. So absolutely amazing. And this, as the plaque says on the wall, was the later charcoal stall, which is definitely bigger than the early one. But it's that thing, you don't really get an idea of the, the scale uh, when you're looking at it on here, but yeah, the size of the place is unbelievable. So Dutton Iron Works was established in 1736, and it's right at the start of the year, uh, sort of the revolution in iron ore smelting because until this point basically the only way to do it was just to heat everything up and the introduction of the blast furnace just revolutionized the way that what's known as pig iron is made and it gave a massive increase in the amount that could be produced and the speed that it produced as well um you only got to look at the size of the place to realize you know, how big that was but now let's say it's Sort of semi derelict look to it is maintained uh, by the Lake District National Park and they give quite a lot of, sort of time and effort to actually bring in what's essentially sort of a very, very old structure, new life, and sort of keeping it sort of around for you know, sort of future generations to sort of realise the history and have a look around it. Um, definitely, I'm sort of blown away with what they've achieved up here. And, the size of the place and actually keeping it running so well um, is that sort of thing that if you don't really sort of know about it because uh, we had no idea we we're up here with uh, Daryl and Keith from Camp Van Tails they said oh we'll pop down there we've never been there and have a look and yeah it's it's a stunning piece of uh, structure and sort of they're just every turn there's more and more information around and more to see absolutely amazing yeah, and dotted around there's sort of the little buildings sort of tagged onto the larger ones. Uh, these would have been sort of either site offices or some of them were actually used as uh, workers' housing as well. But everything's still there. But it's almost the sort of thing you can sort of look at it and almost imagine what sort of was actually in the area at the time. And there's little bits and bobs as well. Um, if you actually have a look just up here. That rock obviously would have been at some point in the furnace for it to actually bubble up like that. And there's little bits like that dotted around. So you can see it's almost sort of developed with the uh, the furnaces. Obviously you can't go out in a place like this and not pick a few blackberries. Mm, lovely. So if you do come up here, have a read of the uh, information. You've actually got a bit of a diagram there as well of how the blast furnace was and how it was all set up. Um, it's really nice actually to sort of see the comparison to how it was now. So yeah, bit of a wander around Got an Ironworks as well. And yeah, really interesting place. If you're in the area, look it up, pop on up. And uh, yeah, I think you'll enjoy it. Great just seeing all the history and how it's all laid out and. It's the sort of thing normally you don't get a chance to actually have a wander around and see how things have been set up. But yeah, it's been really nice, really enjoyed it. Uh, what time to go and find a coffee now, I think. But uh, thanks for watching, I'll see you again soon. Take care.